What's up, creative people? Everybody, Joe here from RBJ Creative Studio, and today we are doing another tutorial on how to create backgrounds and I mean, get nice backgrounds for church designs or any designs, as a matter of fact. So, um, first of all, let me throw this out there. Um, if you are a creative designer and you call yourself a graphic designer. First of all, one thing you have to know or acknowledge is the fact that you are a creative, meaning you create. You don't steal. That's why we, we call ourselves creatives, not stealers. We don't steal. So um, I'm putting this out there that if you're a designer and you want to be perfect in your designs and everything, please, please, please don't steal people's content or anything. Stick to your own way of design. And I think it will help you in all aspects. So um, I have a design here that um, I started this design actually. And one of my people um, just told me that I should um, record or do a tutorial for this. So this is where I got. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not that far. So I'll recreate this. I'll start doing this all over again. So you guys get to know how I get how I go to get the background and everything. Yeah, so we are about to recreate it. So first of all, you open your Photoshop and um, go to file, go to new, and um, you create a new workspace. So the normal 20 inches by 20 inches with resolution 300, and you hit on create. So first of all, don't ever forget your realist yeah because i mean the rulers are everything yeah so first of all you drag the horizontal ruler you drag the vertical ruler and we are good to go so the next thing that i did was actually i already brainstormed the idea or the way of design that i wanted to achieve i, I sat down thought of it and came about how i want the background to be so um, after thinking about it I just went straight for it so first of all you choose your colors I went in for yellow and orange I went in for yellow and orange so you open a rectangle to almost half of the work I think this side was yellow rather to almost half of the work and one thing you should notice this right here that I'm doing is a personal preference but you can find um, you can find tips in it you can find whatever that you want and bring something out of it just to create your own design so after the rectangle I moved on to the shape side and chose polygonal tool <clears throat> so for the polygonal tool you can choose not to I mean hold shift because it's all three sides so you can just open it whether you hold shift or not you're still going to get the exact size so um you open your um how do you call it your rectangle no sorry right triangle rather you open your triangle make sure it's aligned with the um the the, the rectangle that we opened at first then you open the size so here's one thing after you've opened the triangle when you want to let's say scale it up you'd have to hold shift because you've already opened it opening it at first doesn't require shift but then when when it's done opening you have to hold shift to i mean open it up and everything so you hold shift open it up and get a very nice nice scaling so as you can see there's a vast space here so i'm going to try to maintain the same space over wherever i open this so you open another one then you duplicate this one here and turn it so you hit the transform controls right click and go to flip horizontal so it flips horizontal horizontally then you fit it in here Okay, so what you're going to do is duplicate again. I'm very sure we all know the um, 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 shortcut for duplicating. That's holding the alternate until the, um, the white cursor joins the black cursor. Then you just drag 
to do whatever you want to do so um you duplicate again yeah so as i was saying earlier on i wanted to i mean make sure the space here fits all the other space and looking at this side i think this side is a bit narrow so we have to open it up a little bit and this side too is a bit narrow so we have to open it up a little bit and i think yeah we're good to go so um it wasn't all orange it was i think there was a yellow one here and one thing you should know uh i didn't really capture the type of colors i chose for each rectangle or triangle so bear with me on that so after creating this what i did next was to add some texture to the rectangle and the triangles because it was looking quite raw so um i have this type of noise thing i downloaded on pinterest so you move to place embedded then you shift down way down i think it's somewhere down there so i just go okay here it is it's a kind of um <clears throat> it's a kind of how do you call it like a noisy effect type of thing yeah and yeah um the reason why my image didn't open via camera raw is because i have toggled it i've toggled that option off but let me toggle it back on so you guys can i mean see how it works so you move on to edit way down to preference then to camera raw so when you move to the camera raw you shift to file handling and for the jpeg and tiff handling excuse me we have jpeg and we have tiff so you hit on the disable then set to automatically open all supported jpegs then for the tiff you also hit on it and select automatically open all supported tiffs and i think we are good to go so you just hit on ok and that's it so next time if i open any other image it will pass through camera roll. let me try something here it'll pass through camera roll before shifting to wherever i want it to go so let me choose the same thing again and you notice that this, this time around it opens via camera roll instead of coming straight forward yes so this is how it works it opens via camera roll instead of i mean yeah so note that let's move on so moving on um after bringing in the noisy type of design i scaled it up to fill the whole design and here is one thing you should know i mean the blend modes should be your friend the blend mode the dissolve the dark and multiply color burn linear screen whatever they all should be your friend so after setting the scale right for the noise you just go through the blend mode so darken now we have multiply we have color burn we have linear burn we have darker color lighting and screen so i settled for screen or lighting any one of them works the reason why i settled for screen is it it inverts um the noise into white and also um it doesn't change the color of the rectangles and the triangles because i've seen that before i think when we go to um multiply or yeah it was yeah color burn color burn it it changes the colors and stuff so i don't want that that's why i went for screen so after that um you hit on the lock to lock um, um the 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 noise thing so that it doesn't interfere in your design again then you make sure you lock all the rectangles and the polygons so that it doesn't interfere with your design anymore so now that we have the background out of the way we move on to the next part so the next part is is um i've already taken out the background of the um, the subject that's the pastors that are going for the program so there it is and you should know that PNGs never pass through camera raw. It is only JPEG and TIFFs that or camera or camera raw files that pass through camera raw. JPEGs, um, PNGs don't pass through camera raw. So after bringing your image in, I think yeah we have something good here. So um, the photographer already did something to their faces and stuff. Uh, 
I'm not really feeling it. So what I'm going to do is um, I'll have to open the image in a new panel. So instead of place embedded, I'll go to open, then look for the uh, image. I don't really know if I'm going to get the image here because it's already in okay i think it's here so you click on the image and it opens here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to clean their eyes you see their eyes are very red you don't want that reddish kind of eye no no red eye br empire eye red br we don't want it so um i have this action here that i normally use it's called toothbrush yeah i'm i'm sure you're going to say why not eye cleaner or something so the main reason why I'm using toothbrushes, it, it does the same work as the eye cleaner, but then the toothbrush does it very perfectly. Okay, so I think um, there was a glitch somewhere in the recording, so I had to I mean, go back. So I'm going over again. I'm going back to um, the eye cleaning. So um, where i go to was i think was it making a selection or something so let me just reverse this whole thing yeah i'm reversing the whole thing so that i can come back to i mean teaching you guys yeah i think um i'm almost there almost almost uh okay 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 so this is where i got to i thought i think i made the selection and um i i explained why the reason why i like the toothbrush or the toothpaste instead of the normal eye cleaner so okay after opening the toothpaste what you have to do is um make sure you just go through and clean the eye yeah because you don't want any eye red or any type of thing so you just go clean the eye move on to the other guy and also clean the eye yeah just like that and um the teeth too because basically this action was made for the teeth so you just clean the teeth make sure everything is cool okay so after that you merge the whole thing so the shortcut for merging is um shift control e so after after merging you just drag it into your work so we have to delete the one that we had already did and replace it with this one and just scale it up a little bit okay nice so one thing that i don't know if you've noticed about me i'm always i'm always um doing something about my pictures if you send me a normal picture i'll make sure to add an effect to it so that i get a different type of effect so um this this image right here instead of taking the whole thing to camera raw i'll just duplicate it so Control j duplicate and and i'll just take the first duplicated image to camera raw so what i'm about to do is i'm about to apply an effect to the top image then after that i'll reduce the opacity for the top image then i'll get a like some somewhat edited image some, something of that sort so i have an intense dramatic portrait um, um, um effect here so i'll go for it then we have um the detail that's a noise reduction set to um 30 i'll take it out because i don't want it it makes the the skin looks very very like you don't get any details and all that so i just take it out for the color noise reduction i think it's cool then we move on to the basic and expand the exposure a little bit just a little bit that way it's okay so the main reason why i duplicated the image was because you don't want to get an image that's a final work looking very dark like how it looked in um, camera raw that's why i duplicated it so um the effect is working now 
after the effect effect is done i'll just reduce the opacity and it blends with the um, other design so here's the effect i'll um i'll drag the opacity to like 50 or 65 or something and uh yeah so this is what i get after that so let me toggle off the effect so as you can see yeah this is how this is how it works so after that i think you need to save your work you really need to save because of late we are having we are experiencing a whole lot of power outages and it's very very bad uh, i think i've already said this so let me give you a tip on how to save your images um and your works you don't have to save your works like let's see today's today's church program is anointing you save it as anointing then tomorrow's church program will be like um bible then you save it as bible it's it's going to scatter in your 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 workspace but then if you use the church the church or the name of the church to name all your flies you see it's all piled up here yeah that's uh, that's how i do my work chilo new flyer no i think i've already done that so chilo new church flyer right there yeah then you save it and you're good to go so okay we're done with that so here are the details that i'm going to use the the name of the church is the royal palace then the program title is prophetic all night to bracket good friday and the date is 2nd april 2020 and the time is 9 pm yes so i'm going to use all these for the details so first of all what you have to notice is the prophetic all night is the main theme for the design prophetic all night so meaning the prophetic all night by all standards or by all means have to be very bold and big okay so i've i've been addicted to this font for quite a while now and the font name is called ubuntu it is u b u n t u i don't know how you're going to pronounce that but then i call it ubuntu yeah so um this this font right is bank gothic i've been using this font too it's very nice but today i'm going for ubuntu because ubuntu is nice ubuntu gives me a nice typeface ubuntu is a really nice Fun. give big ups to ubuntu charlie ubuntu be doing the most yeah charlie so ubuntu for you are going for the bold ubuntu not mind me saying ubuntu the whole time because it's funny that's what i'm saying ubuntu i'm I, i'm pretty sure probably right now you're laughing or something but then ubuntu all the way so it's prophetic all night so i'll just type in the prophetic and um scale it up a little bit choose a color white for it make sure it is scanned properly and um yeah i think we are good to go on this side so one thing that you have to note is the moment you place your main text in the work you have to start preparing to work on a serious alignment either you're going to align to the right or to the left and looking at how i've created my background you should know i'm about to align to the left so here's our prophetic all night so the all night will fall under the prophetic and it's also going to have the same ubuntu font but i'm going to make sure i align it with the p in the prophetic then i open it up so that it aligns with the c in the prophetic so one thing that i'm looking at right now is um i think everything is okay you might be wondering why i'm using lowercase for this whole thing seriously i don't like ubuntu in uppercase i really prefer ubuntu in lowercase that's why i've typed everything in lowercase but then this is how the uppercase will look like and um it's not that bad it's not really bad but mm, Charlie. It's more like a personal preference type of thing but let's just go with this let's just go with this so what i'm not feeling right now is um, i think the prophetic all night is a little bit small and because of that and i don't think if i open it up 
it will fill the whole thing because it's going to um, enter the white space here and if it enters the white space we're not going to see the rest of the details and i think that will be bad so what i'm going to do is i'm going to extend the yellow rectangle at the background i'm going to extend it something like this yeah i think to the side will be okay then i'll lock it again then i'll select all the tri the triangles again and shift them to the side a little bit yeah i think this will do okay then i'll lock them you see the main text nothing has to interfere with the main text the main text has to be has to be very bold like whoever needs to i mean see your design whoever sees your design has to understand that this is uh, this is the main text this is what you're going for and this is the whole idea behind um, the design so what i did right now was i took the main text way down so that it can mask behind the head of the pasta so i think it has to mask behind the head of the pastas and i think this is cool prophetic all right or i can reduce the size oh shit i forgot i duplicated this guys or i can reduce the size of the pastas shift them to the right a little bit and then i'll drop the prophetic all night down yeah i think this is this is quite cool okay so basically this is the whole idea behind the work after dropping the after dropping the main text you have to prepare yourself for the alignment in the whole work so this is how it's going to work out the alignment or whatever i'm going to add i'm going to follow down here as the details the date the um, time the venue and everything is going to flow down here okay so for the same ubuntu font i'll duplicate the all night reduce the size a little bit take it down a notch and um let's see if we have a theme for the design there's no theme. we have a good friday into brackets so let's just work on that so into brackets good friday you see one thing about the ubuntu font is i don't like the the jane the jane looks like the monstrat font is jane and i don't like it so um i'm about to change the ubuntu font for the good friday and i'll go in for gotham because gotham is a it's gotham is a very nice font i've been going around with gotham for a long time now gotham is basically the king of fonts and um i might be wrong i might be right but i really love gotham as a font and everything so the good friday shifts down here and um i will duplicate this down to continue with the design okay so um we have 2nd april 2020 as the date and 9 p.m prompt as the time so 2nd april or go like this 2nd april all in uppercase yes only uppercase then i will scale it up a little bit because yeah we really need to see the date because the date is basically the whole thing about um the program so 2020 sometimes confuses a whole lot of designers and i think it is something that we we need to i mean wait 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 did, did i did i say 2020 seriously i think my pastor typed 2020 for me because i copied this and pasted it here so i'm pretty sure he also he made a mistake so 2nd april 2021 instead of writing or typing the 2021 in um, numeral form i'll type them in words so t w g n t then instead of 20 in words i'll bring the 21 as number so 21 just like this and we're good to go and it also represents 2021 it's just about you being creative and you getting to understand or know what you want and i mean yeah so let's move on to the time for the time the time is 9 p.m prompt let me just copy this guy so the time is 9 p.m prompt 
so I just paste it here yep copying comes with the font yeah that's one thing you should know it, it, it really beats me all the time so 9 p.m. prompt has to be in uppercase and it also has to go with the color white and it has to also be in bold and um, I think I have to open up the kernel a bit and um, yeah reduce the size because it's just the time even though it's not just but it's time time shouldn't be bigger than the date so then we'll move on to our venue but i don't think this venue is accurate because behind la olympia bus stop is not a venue it should be like adabra car behind la olympia but i mean clients are clients will always be clients so i just copy and insert because i mean you can change it and your client is going to be like no i have a reason for putting it putting it that way so you just go along with what the client wants so yeah we rock the gotham font with the same bold and everything and um, i don't think it's in uppercase so we just hit on the all caps here to put it in uppercase okay so behind la olympia fast up i think the, the 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 venue is a little bit small so we're going to divide it into two so behind la olympia then the bus stop follows down then we align to the left and also space it up a little bit and uh, make sure the alignment is working so we make it we make sure it touches the ruler here just to follow our alignment and everything then we keep moving so first of all don't forget to save let me just save the control s should be your friend you should i mean basically have the control plus s as your friend okay so now what is the next detail i think we have prophetic direction communion wine or coke so let's just copy this guy and bring it in so um We'll duplicate the behind the Olympia bus stop and paste the next thing here. So you see this is very long, it's quite long. So we just divide it into two and make sure it's aligned to the left. Change the color to white and change the font to Gotham. But this time around, instead of going for the bold the bold font, we're going for the book yes i don't know why they they named it book or something uh, that is why we came to meet so we just go with that make sure they are in uppercase too well having it in uppercase is kind of my things like a personal preference type of thing so you can yeah you can also leave yours in lowercase or go with uppercase any way that helps you with your design so i'm seeing that the book is very thin so let me go in, in for the medium the medium is quite cool and i'm pretty sure we've all noticed that the white is not really working with the yellow yeah i'm about to do something about it i just want to get the text and everything intact first so the next detail is dress code a touch of red and black okay touch of red and black let's just copy this guy bring it back duplicate the prophetic direction paste select change the color to white change the font to gotham and to medium and also put it in uppercase nice so as you can see the dress code is also kind of um, long but instead of um divided it into two I think the best way to go about this is just cut off the dress code um, bring down the a touch of I think we have H at where it's not supposed to be a touch of red and black then we we'll duplicate and put 
the dress code back in so we just paste it back so this is what i'm going to do i'm going to open a rectangle and place the dress code on it and so that it can pop up so i think the best color to go for right now probably might be ash or orange orange does it orange does it seriously or well, let me just try the the ash too and see because ash can work with yellow too you see i'm not i'm not kidding i'm not i'm not kidding seriously it really complements it so yeah for the time i was thinking of putting a time in a rectangle as i've done with the dress code but i don't really know as uh, i don't really know if it's going to work well let's just keep on moving so a touch of red or black for the dress code and i think it's nice so to be consistent and stay online and be quite okay with the design i think i would have to cut out the prophetic direction and drag it on a rectangle just so i can stay cons consistent with the lower side of the design so i've duplicated the communion wine or coke and i'll just paste in the prophetic direction that i copied yeah so now i'll have to extend let me zoom in i'll have to extend my rectangle okay let me take off this guy uh, i think we're good to go okay so looking at um the yellow i don't think the yellow is really working with the white so instead of yellow we're going to invert the yellow to the orange instead and let's see if it, the orange is going to work with um the the, the 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 text that's the white text okay so I'm, I'm i'm making this rectangle touch my ruler here just so we work with the alignment and everything so as you know we are aligning to the left and that's what that is what we're doing right now so let me change the rectangle from yellow to orange to see uh this is not the orange i chose i think this is the orange i went for yeah so i think this is cool and if you look at the april there's this white thing over there i think it's from the noise that i already created so what i'm going to do is i'm going to um flip the noise horizontally so that the white thing gets to go to the other side yeah okay so after that you just lock it back again so that it doesn't interfere with your design so having this being as your design already it's solid i love how we've come with the whole thing yeah and one thing you should know we can throw in some date sign time sign venue sign here just to i mean yeah get along with it so i I'm, I'll, I'll go with that and one thing to i think we have a lot of spacing in for the behind la olympia and let me close kernel it a little bit okay nice okay so um this is what i have so far and i think it's solid enough to be called a design and one thing we are leaving out is the royal palace that's the church the name of the church so let me just no no no, no. let me just copy and insert into the design so i'll copy the behind the olympia because it's going to fit the size of what i want to do with the church name so choose white choose gotham select i think medium will be okay and um, go in for the uppercase i'm good to go i didn't really ask for a church logo because i don't think they have one so i just go with this full i just go with this one so the royal palace and um you see if you don't zoom in you you might not know if your texts are touching the rulers because look at look at look at this here it's not touching it yeah so you can zoom in and check it out yourself yeah so after that the royal palace presents because they are presenting the pre wow wow pre 
really presents yes and um, I'll take this down a little bit and kennel it I'll open up the kennel till it fills the whole space yeah okay I think we're good to go then I'll make sure the presents also is working with alignment okay nice so um, after this the next thing that you have to look at is the main text the prophetic all night we have to do something about the prophetic all night and if I say do something it means make sure it's really popping make sure the prophetic all night is, is really popping so I'm not really feeling the prophetic all night in the Ubuntu font despite me saying Ubuntu is the best font and whatever whatever I'm not really feeling it because yeah it has to be in all lowercase before it does it for me it has to be in something like this before it does it for me and um yeah i think something like this will be okay okay so um after that the next thing i have to go in for is the punchline talking about punchline something you you have to do to the main text to let it stand out to let it to let it look different from all the other text so this is something i do most of the time and please save please save yeah save save yes control s at, at the back control s yeah nice okay so one thing i normally go in for is i'll duplicate the prophetic all night it's duplicated now i'll merge it and um i'll open it up throw in a gradient overlay for what i did right now and obviously i'm going to go in for the theme of this design i'm going for the normal yellow we are going in for right now and the orange i'm pretty sure my color has changed based on the orange because the orange i went in for wasn't as dull as this right now so this is the gradient we went in for so we're just going to i mean try something out here and you see the a here the a in the all is almost getting masked in the color so i suggest we add another yellow at the end of the gradient oh shit. yeah so i'll touch the yellow Touching the yellow means you've copied it and clicking on another part means you've pasted. Yes. So something like this will do it for me. Okay. Then after that, I rasterize the whole thing, select my eraser, then I'll just erase the middle part just like this. This is something I do most of the time. I really do this most of the time because it's really fun to do and you can even reduce the opacity for the eraser so that it doesn't wipe away all the design so look at look at the type of effect you're getting right now it's it's working all right but it's not taking all the, the details from the work that you just did okay so after that you can reduce the opacity for the text here and yeah it's really working for the ends right now so the next thing to do is select the all night the prophetic all night once again duplicate merge by this time around take them down to um, um to the bottom like take them out take them back to at the back of the text then instead of going in for the normal white you can invert it to black or choose a different color or whatever you want to do this so after choosing the black you can reduce the opacity yeah this thing i'm doing right here can feel like a 3d but it's not a 3d but it can feel like a 3d so after reducing the opacity a bit you can duplicate again and reduce again you see we it's not a 3d well, we're getting the type of 3d feel and you just go down again duplicate again and 
go down again okay so you can reduce the opacity to to give it something yeah something like that so i would like to add a drop shadow at the end of it make sure the opacity is working the distance is also working size is also working and the spread works perfectly nice so look at this we have a punch we have a prophetic all night but a prophetic all night with a punch nice okay so looking at this right here i think we have a solid design that we can call a design now but me being me me being rbg i, I won't settle for less i won't settle for this i'll go the extra amount to throw in another punch line in the design so let me just see this right here and i'll go into my archives and bring out a background or a crazy background that can fit as a texture in this orange part so i'll just enter um actually i wanted to create a 3d for the whole thing but i thought it would be a long process and stuff that's why i didn't go in for it so let's just let me go to my archives and bring out a very deep with a texture background that, that can work with um, what we're doing so I'll just go in I think I saw something yes I'll go in with a cross nothing big or nothing yeah the cross will do it for me so we open it it passes via um, camera roll I'll throw in the intense dramatic portrait on it to give it a very deep feel and I think the detail is disturbing us a little bit here so let me just open the exposure a bit then hit on ok don't mind me because the the, the how do you call it the quality in this work uh, in this image is a bit drawn down yeah so don't mind me so after after this you make sure you clip you clip the background into the rectangle that is um, the orange rectangle then you set the background to overlay just to see how it comes out so looking at this we can see the cross here but it's not really popping out so what i'm going to do is i'm going to work around with the blend mode so i'll start from normal go to dissolve darken multiply color burn linear burn so i'll just go through it till i get something that i want i think color dodge color dodge is kind of cool but let's just go in through all the way down before we settle for one so color dodge linear dodge lighter color overlay overlay is kind of deep soft light is deep hard light vivid light linear light pen light hard mix difference exclusion subtract divide hue saturation color luminosity i think we're going for what oh, was it what oh, was it again i think it was screen no it was was it color dodge yeah it was color dodge yeah so i'll set off a color dodge then then i'll just so one thing i'm having a problem right now is i'd want the whole thing to fill almost every place in the rectangle but then because of the um the cross here I'm not sure I can scale it down because if I do that, if I scale it down, of course it's going to look stretched. But it might be okay. I think it's okay because, yeah, look at it here. Yeah, I think it's cool. It's cool. Okay. So one thing we should notice right now, it's, it's still the white text are not working. So I have this punchline guy that I call Spotlight. Yeah, I have a Spotlight guy here fresh design resources this folder actually came from a design guru I downloaded this folder from one designer way back in 2015 he was also a powerful designer at that time but but now he doesn't design anymore so I guess I took the mantle from him shouts to Don Sly on this one shouts to Don Sly so um, I'll insert the spotlight make sure it's working then i'll clip it in the rectangle over the text yes so this is what 
I got and um, I still think the text is not really popping out yeah I, don't know, I still think it's not really popping out but then yeah it's quite good and I'm not really feeling the oranges that I'm supposed to feel so I don't know if I'm supposed to go back for the overlay because the overlay was giving me a very reddish orange feel and it was nice I think I might settle for this let me add the spotlight and see how about reduce the opacity for the spotlight just a little bit yeah nice I think this is cool yeah I think this is cool okay okay so um reason why my backgrounds are so complicated that you can't do them is I take my time to create them I make sure my backgrounds are really working and complementing the design yeah that is what well, that, that is one thing I don't joke with yeah okay so um, the next thing to do is add their names the, 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 the pastors names so we ha I have this font autograph that really 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 writes out the name of the pastors I have this design here I don't know if I used the autograph here and no, I didn't use it oh, I didn't use it I think I was create the whole thing so um, the pastor in the green suit is called Gilord Borty so Gilord on top and the body down so instead of going with the normal Gotham I'll search for the autograph here oh I think it's it's autography rather yeah it's already here yeah so I just select it and it really writes the name very nice for me let's take the text out of uppercase so we can feel it nice you scale it up, give it a little bit of space, then boom. Yes. You can put it to the side. You can... You see, one thing about putting names beside or on the pastors, it should be at the point where people can notice that this is the pastor, this is the pastor's name. So instead of it being on the side here, it can also be on the pastor, something like this. Yeah, good to go but then i prefer to do it like this yeah then we we'll duplicate the same thing to this side and this pastor's name is Theo royals so Theo royals on this one i think he is the general overseer of um the royal palace yeah so Theo royals on this one and i think we're good to go so um i think i have to ship shift the yeah picture a little bit to the side yeah you got Bote on this one and Theo Royal Royals on this one so guys this is it this is this is it I think I have to end here or else the video is going to be very long I don't want that too so um yeah this is it so if you see any additional additional design or additional finishing touches probably you might ask me in the comment section and I'll answer you Julie, I'll answer you. I'll tell you how I did it. By now, I just want to end the video so that it doesn't exceed the, the, the normal time that my Premiere Pro can take. Yeah. So, guys, kindly subscribe to the channel. Like the video. Yeah, do whatever you have to do. Smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Stay with me. Stay with me. RBJ Creative Studio for life. You see, the future is very, very promising. And, um, fingers crossed, I'm bringing you um, creative insight season one episode two very soon very soon might be tomorrow very soon might be the day before tomorrow very soon might be the day after tomorrow so yeah so guys kindly um subscribe to the channel and um, like the video i'll bring another design over or another tutorial over to you very soon and yeah so catch you guys next time bye bye
What's up, people? Rabbi Bry Jones here from RBJ Creative Studio, and today we're doing a tutorial. It's been a while since I recorded over a tutorial, and um, I've got these requests that I should add voiceovers to my tutorials, even though it's not that easy to do. I'm taking my time to um, get to this one for you guys. So today we're going to learn something about um, church flyers. So I got this, um, how do we call it, um, this design request from a client to do a theme for 2021 design. So instead of going for the normal roll up, today we're going for a different size, there's a landscape. So this is the size that we're going for this time around. So we are going in depth on how to, I mean, start the background from scratch, the text, the whatever, the I mean, finishing touches, the alignment, typography, and everything. So it's going to be a long run. So yeah, so um, let's go, let's let's get going, guys. Let's get going. So we finish early. So first of all, um, you need to visualize what you want to do. Visualize what you want to do. So let's say I want to um, get a normal background, put in my text in the middle, put in um, the church name here putting stuffs here and all sort of things so you just need to visualize what you want to do so first of all let's get to the background so um you go to where your resources are um i have my resources here so i just get the resources then you go through for a background you're going through for a background i think i'll go with this then you drag in the background to the workspace so um i've set my um camera roll to default that um it can open in jpeg and raw everything so just hit on okay then your image imports inside so this is what we're going to do we are going to work on the background we're going to work on the background so this is the background i chose for my design so um <clears throat> this is kind of like a red purple pink orange type of background but then today i want to go in for a type of greenish feel i want to go in for a type of greenish feel so i'm going to fill this whole um, workspace with the background and don't worry about my um, um, stretching and everything you, you can feel free when you're working on backgrounds you don't stretch texts or typos but then when it comes to backgrounds you can stretch as many as you want so what I'm going to do is if I zoom in you can see we, we have a pixelated and a blurred background here just because the backgrounds resolution and quality was very low so put this down whenever you want to skip or you want to get away with blurred backgrounds first of all rasterize the background by choosing let me let me go over. you choose the eraser and you make sure you selected the background you hit on it and you get this this smart object blah 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 then you just hit on okay so you move on to filter then you, you get to blur then you get to caution blur so the reason why we're going for Gaussian blur is because the Gaussian blur allows the background to be more blurred, which overrides the already blurred background. So this is what we get now. We get a more blurred background and um, it overrides the already blurred background that we had. So this is what we have now. Um, I don't know, but then when I'm creating backgrounds, it's very simple for me. I can create a background in like a minute 30 seconds or so i don't know I, I don't really count i don't really calculate the time i used to create backgrounds but then um after we're done with this i think i did a tutorial on gradient maps we'll move down here to our effects then select gradient map so this is what we get a gradient map it's it's um self-explanatory it's a gradient map map sorry because it's a gradient so you click on the gradient here 
and you make sure you select the type of colors you want to use so today i'm going in for green i'll just hit on the green here drag down hit on ok i'll select the black here click on the color select the green but then go in for a lighter green see this this is what happens whenever you're choosing gradients and working on gradient maps you need to make sure you need to make sure that um you are making sure um wait what did i just say you need to make sure that you're making sure you have to make sure that you have two colors even if it's the same color one has to be a bit bright than the other so we have a deeper color here that's a deeper green and we have a lighter green here so yeah you can go in for another color but then the same green but then you choose a much greener then you come to the last color in the gradient then you choose a much 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 greener color so this is what you get this is what you get so let's toggle off the gradient map and toggle it back on you see this is very cool this is very nice and it fits what i want to do so right now that we have this out of the way you just move on to the next thing um more times whenever i'm working on the background i used i'm very used to locking them because you might not know what you want to select you might not know what you want to take out you might intentionally or unintentionally take something out so you have to um, lock your background and the gradients and everything so um the theme for 2021 uh i don't know about this but let me just uh, no um the theme for 2021 is, is it reviving something or something i didn't save this i didn't really save this but then let's just get get over with the background first so um theme for 2021 we need to get like a crowd see we're working with um church here it's a church flyer so you need to get that kind of feel of people in church or people praising god or people worshiping god that type of feel so what we're going to do here is look for an image or you can just go to google um, um i've i've disconnected my wi-fi now so i'm not sure i can go to google that's why i'm here and i think we have a similar image here yes it's either you use an image of people celebrating or people praising god something of that sort or i don't know just whenever you're creating backgrounds you have to consider the fact that what whatever theme you're working in, working with let's say it's um it's a birthday kind of thing you have to make sure you have in the background with a birthday feel if it's a um, funeral you need to make sure you have a background with a funeral feel so we have a church here you need to have a church kind of feel in it also and um you can even insert any other image that you see i mean you, you deem fit so i think i have a background here i downloaded the last time let's just go in and bring it in it's like a it's a it's like an, an inside of a church yeah an inside of a church type of way and um, it can represent the church as a whole too and it can also be um, a representative for a background so let me just go in go through real quick and look for it and um uh i think it's somewhere around here so um basically whenever you're creating backgrounds you have to make sure that um you are you are, you are doing something that will get your viewers or your clients attention drawn to the title of the program or whatever you are doing so you don't have to just be messing around doing anything that you want you have to make sure you're hitting the bar don't just put in any backgrounds where is this guy come on you have to make sure you're yeah there he is okay so now 
I have the background and it's it's an inside of a church this is how it looks I've already used the image that's why you see the edits and everything here I've already used it and it's the inside of a church I downloaded this from Google somewhere but then you can go to onsplash.com for quality images like this they are all free on splash.com this is not a paid advert I'm just I am just telling you guys because they're good so you hit on ok and get your um, background or the church inside into your background so what we're going to do is we're going to clean the sides that's the left side the right side the up and the down part of the image then we we'll reduce it. We we'll reduce the opacity. Set the blend mode to lum luminous or overlay any other. So um, rasterize first because you don't want to have glitches on the way. Make sure your eraser is at the perfect tone, perfect size, whatever you want it to be. Then you erase the right side. So the main reason why my my piece is going slow. Is because I don't have the appropriate or I don't have the um, acquired or I don't have the required graphics card in it I mean it's it's what it's what it is I mean I'm just trying to get around here so you people should bear with me even though it's going to take a lot of time you people asked for it you wanted me to do a normal version or a voiceover version of how I do my backgrounds. Either than that, I would have st sticked to my speedworks, and I know you people don't want the speedworks, so yeah. So you clean the right side and the left side, clean the lower part too. So we just want this middle, we just want this type of middle, the part with the windows and the um, um, ceiling and all those things. You just clean the lower part, and then when it's done, you clean the upper part too. <laughs> you make sure you're cleaning well too because you don't want any like look look at this side you see it's not well cleaned you don't have to run it over again so just run it over again yes then as i was saying earlier on you set the blend mode to okay randomly what i do is i don't skip or i just i, I just don't go straight to the overlay i make sure I use the arrows on the keyboard to go through the blend mode so darken multiply color burn linear burn darker color lighting screen color dodge so you just go through and um which you see the overlay this is the overlay the overlay um, um, um it blends with the colors of the background and it's very nice lighter color linear dodge color dodge you just go through Make sure you are choosing the one that fits perfectly. I think I'm going back up. Fits perfectly. This is the soft light, hard light, vivid light, linear, pen light, hard mix, difference, exclusion, subtract, divide, hue, saturation, color, and luminosity. So my target is overlay and luminosity. You can choose luminosity and reduce the opacity to like um, 50, 45, some type of way. Or you can reduce the opacity to 43 as it is. Then set the blend mode to overlay. You see how it is right here. Yeah. Then you make sure you open it. You open it quite enough to fill the upper part of the background. So right now we have a solid green background. I can take any text of our choice or any text text color of our choice then after that you make sure you lock it so what we're going to do next is we wouldn't want to stick with an all green type of background we would want to add some kind of um, flair to it this is how we create church backgrounds you can this, this is the normal basic way to follow the church background procedure i mean yeah but then if you'd like to break the rules feel free you'd like to i mean do whatever you want but make sure you're being creative you can feel free so what i'm going to do is i will import a lens flare from my resources folder i have a lot of resources and um 
I'm not sure I can share it because I'd have to upload them all before you can get it. But then, if you want it, you can DM me on WhatsApp and I can get you links. So, we bring in the light bulb and it's going to pass through camera roll first. And by the way, I'm using camera roll 13.1. I think it's the latest version of camera roll and it's very nice. They've simplified everything here basic curve detail color mixing and everything i'll make sure to leave a link in the description for the camera roll 13.1 so we have the light bulb here and with the light bulb the the the, the basic um work of the light bulb is to come in and give us a glorious look right now if i turn off the light bulb it looks very normal it looks all greenish so what we're going to do is rasterize the light bulb clean out the black parts and one thing you should know um, instead of cleaning the black parts you can set the um, blend mode to screen and still lose the black parts but then I prefer I mean deleting them off yeah so you just delete them then after deleting you still you can still set it to the screen mode and this is the part that makes the light bulb very useful you need to make sure you are going to filter blur into the gaussian blur because the gaussian blur is going to make it a light bulb yeah you basically just deleting the black background is not going to make it a light bulb but so right now what you see is like a light bulb there because of the gaussian blur that we added so you hit on okay and um, once again, this is my version of how I create backgrounds. So you can take my version, add your own, just feel free, break some rules, get creative, think out of the box and all those things. So right now we have the light bulb here in place. But then one thing you should know, when we come to the layer side here, the, 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 the church or the inside of the church has to be on top of the light bulb so we still get the details so look at this look at this before and after so we have the light bulb on it you can't see the windows here you see the windows are kind of off here but the moment you take the um, inside of the church and put it on top of the light bulb you get the inside details and you still get the light bulb so this is how it works so right now we've created something solid and it's a cool background <laughs> So um, I inserted just an image that's the inside of a church. You can get creative and insert like a green grass type of thing down here. Since we're going in for green, you can I mean get creative and so let me let me just bring in a green background if only I have some in my resources. And um, I'm not really sure, but let's just keep looking. You just keep looking as I said earlier on I've disconnected my Wi-Fi that's why I'm not going I think we have one here but uh, I don't know if it's going to help let's just take it inside so talking about backgrounds backgrounds don't have to be like the normal procedure following agrochemicals what we don't want the agrochemicals thingy so we are going to delay that part to so rasterize and choose the rectangular marquee tool or M shortcut M for rectangular marquee tool and delete the agrochemical side. Then control D for um, deselect. Make sure it's filled up at the edge. Then the same procedure we used on the inside of the church. We cleaned, we cleaned um, the lower part, we cleaned the right part, the left part, and the upper part. So you just follow these procedures and clean. Then you just drag it down because that's where we want it to be. And um, make sure it's on top of the gradient map. Then you choose overlay for it so overlay if overlay doesn't work we can go in for luminosity if it doesn't work too then we just stick with the overlay then we reduce the opacity 
just a little bit so right now looking at the background we have like two things here we have the inside of the church and we have the green grass thingy down there and um inside of the church i mean when when we're talking about design you need to make sure that the things that you're putting into your background also signifies what you want to tell or the thing or whatever you want people to think about your design so we have um the green grass and you know green represents freshness i mean growth and all those things so having a green thing here i mean yeah for freshness and growth and for the inside of the church too just to give the design a feel of a church vibe kind of way and yeah so right now this is the background that we have let's let's just i'm very curious here let me just just take off the gradient map and see how it's going to look like voila so you need to understand this don't create backgrounds and be like yo i can't change the color of the background right now we have a green type of um gradient map for it we can just come back into the gradient map change it to a blue type of thing just make sure you're going in for the kind of right colors so right now we are choosing blue and we're just going for the right colors and this too is a background so you don't just create a background and be there with just what you have you create the background make sure um you can change the colors of the background and um, this is what i'm going to do i'll make sure i have three backgrounds the green one the normal without the gradient map and this one too so let me just let me just hit on cancel and we'll have the green one so um this is um, um how do you call it the background for my design and as you all can see it's very nice if i turn off the gradient map it's still very nice still very saucy still very get it still have the details and everything turn it on still nice so yeah guys uh i'm not ending it here i'm just going to um stop this because i haven't downloaded the detail for the um, for the design yeah i thought i had it in my whatsapp here but it turns out my whatsapp is out so what i'm going to do now is stop the video here and i'll make sure to continue it as soon as i get the details i have the details in my whatsapp so i'm just going to get it then move on with it so um i'll just end the background here so we dealt with the background so we're going to move on to the text and how to go about the text and everything so it's going to be two versions that's the part one for the background and the part two for the um text and the others so yeah guys kindly subscribe to the channel like the video share comments ask me any question that you want to ask about backgrounds and i've got you covered and one thing you should know as a graphic designer always seek out to be versatile versatility is everything when it comes to graphic design and you don't have to stick to the same thing every day every time sometimes you need to deliver vintage sometimes you need to deliver type of motion graph type of designs sometimes you need to deliver cool designs sometimes you need to deliver very hot designs i mean being versatile is everything so guys subscribe to the channel like the video and i'll get the part two to you next bye bye what's up people everybody john here from rbj creative studio and we're back again with the continuation of our first tutorial so um our first tutorial we worked on the background for a church flyer and this is how it went this is how um it turned out this is what we got so uh um, we 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 paused or we we cut short the video that's the first video the part one because we had to i mean um cut it instead of instead of making it very lengthy so um this is the part two of the video and what we're going to do next is we're going to um start with the text the details and everything 
yeah so um the theme for 2021 is a glorious church revived to possess the nations that's ephesians chapter 3 verse 21 5 verse 27 so i have my church logo here and um first of all church logos church logos if you have if, if you get a logo that's a church logo from a client and it's very clean i mean it helps or it goes a long way to giving your design the feel that you want so um i'll just take the logo plus an ellipse that i attached to it right click on it duplicate layers the document thing 2020 so we want to take it from here to the upper room thing for 2021 you hit on ok and automatically we'll come back to the side and voila there it is so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure um the details or the check design is going to be up here then the detail is going to follow here then the quotation is going to follow down here then i think um social media handles will also be down there so what we're going to do now next is just put in the details so here's our church logo the church of pentecost so i'll choose my text to shortcut for text to is also t there it is you just click here and if if we are to nominate a font for the year i would definitely go in for gotham because more graphic designers have been using gotham for a while now and this year i must say um gotham it's either gotham or, or monstrat both of them either one of them gets an award for the most used um font of the year so the church of pentacles hey, Charlie. the church of so um one thing you should look at whenever you're typing the church name you need to make sure you see the church of pentacles is very long that if we are to type the church of pentacles straight just like this i mean it will be very long and it's quite good although but then look at this very raw but what we can do is we can type the church off then we can duplicate the church of I know I'm very sure you know how to do this duplicate type of, type of thing. So we type the Pentecost here. Yep. And um, make sure our kerneling is quite good. I think we're good with this. So one thing that we can do is either make the Pentecost quite big enough to align with the F. This is where our rulers come in. This is where our realize come in place. So I'll just make sure I select the church of zoom in to the church of bringing the ruler just at the tip of the T and just at the tip of the F. Nice. Now we have to make sure the end or the tip of the P is touching the ruler and the tip of the T is also touching the ruler. And as you can see here, that's as that's exactly what we've done. And it's, it's very simple it's as simple as that you don't have to add any i mean any detailed whatever whatever to it just make sure you're going in for um something simple so the church of pentecost something like this I'm going to go. so what we are what we have to do next is uh i think i made a mistake i should have done that first we need to make sure we are dividing um the work into two that's we make sure we are using our rulers putting it in the middle and going according to the rulers so we we divide it um vertically then we divide it horizontally and whenever you want to feel that this is the middle you need you need to make sure you are waiting for the snap whenever you are using the rulers to divide your work you make sure you wait for the snap and that's the snap there yeah so you select this whole thing and you see the middle part 
that's this side on top of the C this side and this side you make sure they align on the ruler and that's our middle and that's our middle you need to make sure you are aligning on the ruler that's that's the main reason why you need to always get your rulers in place your rulers have to be in place even with the backgrounds for the inside church background you see i didn't use the rulers but then it's in the middle yeah and for the green grass too it's quite off but then you can just shift it in place and um yeah so you always have to make sure you are working in alignment everything is on point there's nothing going out of line and one thing we need to look at here is um you see the church of pentecost is white and the background is some white kind of not working with the text but then it's cool let us let's let, let's make sure we finish the whole thing before we can i mean conclude to the final whatever so the church of pentecost is a whole church as a whole but break it down we have upper room english assembly that's that's the main um, um, um the church that we are doing the design for so upper room english assembly will follow so you just drag one of these texts down and upper upper room nice so um i'm pretty sure you've guessed what i'm about to do we're not just going to go straight and just type the whole upper room english assembly straight there we have the upper room then the english assembly will follow down english assembly down. nice okay so um i'm pretty sure i've already told you about the text and the background thing but then we'll get to it as soon as we're done with the text and everything so the church of pentecost upper room english assembly chronum would have to add chronum to it so um I don't know about this but this is a personal preference i'll just put the chrome down here i just put the chrome down here yeah because you can't leave it out you can't leave the chrome out of the design so church of pentecost upper room english assembly chrome and um yeah basically what we want so now we are left with where to put the upper room English assembly corner, and um, this I, I just I just had to do this. You see, the upper room English assembly is the church's name, and the corner is where the church is located. So we can try put the corner in a rectangle. Put it in a rectangle. So I'll choose red for the rectangle. And the reason why I choose red for the rectangle is because, I mean, you can't hate red. Red is always red. Red is going to be always red. Red is the red we know. Red is the guy. He is the whatever, whatever. So I'll just reduce the size of the rectangle. And um, this thing always beats me. It's either the edge of the rectangle is aligning with the text or the edge of the chrome, that's the key, is aligning with the text. It always beats me a lot. But then I always end up choosing the rectangle aligning with the upper text. So this is what we have now. This is what we have now. And um, it looks good already. It looks good. So, not to be um, judgy or something, but let me try put the upper English assembly somewhere. And you know something, graphic design, you have to be open for a lot of ideas because um, you've been doing it this way. You're putting the church's name down here. Once in a while, you try to, I mean, put it here. 
try to change up switch up a little bit don't just be going in for the regular 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 thing so and um it, that's what makes design design because you don't have to stick to one thing you would have to change up switch up do something and yeah so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to make sure the church of pentecost aligns with the upper room english assembly that's it you have to make sure you're paying attention to every detail when it comes to the text and the typography alignment and everything so what we're going to do is we are going to make sure the church of hits the top arrow then the lower part of the pentecost hits the arrow to then click on okay so this way as you can see we are having an alignment here and we have the upper room english assembly aligning with the church of pentecost and i think we have to do the same thing for the logo too but i don't really know but um let's see um, i think i'll just leave the logo like that yeah then after that you have to make sure you select all of them and align them in the middle so now you know that you don't you don't just have to type in anything and just move on you type make sure you are following the alignments and everything and so this is what we have you need to save control s save your work before um any any whatever comes in your way so the theme for 2021 is a glorious church revived to possess the nations so first of all you write we will have to type in theme for 2021 so let's drag this guy here then theme for 20 do you know do you know i was about to type 2020 like for reals i mean it, it's not only me definitely other designers might have encountered the same problem we are used to typing the whole year to the extent that we still get used to typing it but not 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 this time around not this time around because definitely you have to move on you don't have to stay in the year and keep staying in the year and keep staying in the year so yeah i was just checking if my red was pure red so theme for 2021 on a red background then we'll drag again and um, a glorious church revived to possess the nations you see it's a whole lot let me just type it here a glorious church revived revived to possess the nations uh, okay so one thing let's 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 get into detail here a glorious church revived to possess the nations you can't just type this put it in the middle align and just do it like this no all attention is going to be drawn to a glorious church revived to possess the nations because it is the theme for 2021 and it's the main text it's what we want to know is the main reason why we're doing the flyer the flyer is the main reason why we're doing the designs the main reason why we're doing whatever we're doing so we're going to break down a glorious church revived to possess the nations and make sure we are doing something creative with it so um First of all, let me just drag this guy down here for reference so that I just look on it. Yeah, a glorious church revived to possess the nations. Glorious church revived to possess the nations. Okay, let's just delete all these guys and be left with a glorious church. Align a glorious and open up, open up a glorious. Yep. A glorious open up a glorious you see um this is one thing you have to know 
main texts or program titles always have to get their attention and everything i don't know if you understand what i'm trying to say they they need to get the attention yeah so a glorious church revived so a glorious church revived so we have revived um, church and revived beneath a glorious then we'll just come in with our alignment so this is where this is where everything gets to be we're going to bring out our rulers make sure we're pinning down the edges pin down the edge of a and the edge of s make sure they are aligned with church what how about that? church oh come on church like this so a glorious church revived to possess the nation so lower is going to to possess the so we have to possess possess the nice so this is what i'm going to do to possess the is not a type of word how should i put it it's like it's a continuing word it's continuing the a glorious church revived to connect with the nations so the possess or to possess the would have to be small then we'll come in with the nation so the nations being the last word will have to be big too so nations now okay let's just turn this guy off we'll need him again so a glorious church revived to possess the nations and that's very nice you see um whenever you follow the rules you understand them and you get the chance to break them because you need to understand the game before you can break the rules so a glorious church revived to possess the nation this is supposed to be the normal basic type of way or this is what i'm doing it's like a personal preference type of thingy so um a glorious church revived to possess the nations um someone might be like a glorious church on the first um, um on the first sentence or the first line and i mean yeah it depends on whoever is doing the design it depends on how creative you're going to be so a glorious church provide to possess the nations what i'm going to do here is i'm going to put the possess to possess the in a rectangle that's what i'm going to do so it doesn't look raw doesn't look just like that it doesn't look normal just it doesn't look all together or something and um i don't know bread and ash kind of works very well together sometimes whenever you are putting a text on the background some something like that yeah and um yeah it's cool a glorious church revived to possess the nations okay glorious church revived to possess the nations and one thing i should know you have to being creative as in your own Im imagination i mean you are the you are the only one doing the design and you're the person thinking about it you're the person going about the design so you're you have to be very creative when it comes to it so right now i just forget nations with the church of pentecost globe having nations on the globe too i mean works perfectly well so i'm going to put a circle or an ellipse on the nations just to cover the whole or the negative space that we have there drag in the logo and um, put it on the nations so what i'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to omit the circles around the nation so i just use the lasso tool real quick just take them out there's another way for this but i don't know why i'm doing this yeah so you hit shift control i for invert to delete the circle just hit on backspace and you're good to go so what you're going to do is just open it open it open it nice and you're good to go why there's okay i think i wanted to take out the dove bar 
think it's cool. I'm just going to change the color. So I'll change the color to no i didn't take the background there's a uh, there's an invisible white in it so just use the magic wand to take it out take it out and color overlay so i'll go in for red works i think green green will work perfectly so i just go in for green nice very nice i think the rectangle this rectangle too can have a green yeah but i'll just I'll just go with the ash. So this is how this is how design works. You don't just stick with the normal procedure. You need to, I mean, yeah, keep going. Yo, let me do this. Let me do that. Let me see if this will work. Let me just see if this is going to work. And just so a glorious church revives to possess the nations. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use a gold text for a glorious church revived nations. Yeah, so. I'll just go to place embedded and bring in my gold. My gold is somewhere in the downloads because I downloaded it from Google and it's somewhere around here. Yeah, that's it. So you bring in the gold and you clip the gold into the text. That's what you're going to do. You clip the gold into the text. So, um, Clipping the gold into the text gives the text a kind of gold feel and we all know what I mean gold signifies. Gold signifies royalty, it signifies um, a whole lot. It's it's a whole lot. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. And plus, let me say this again. For the background right here, don't worry about it. We're going to find something to do with it. Yeah, so duplicate the gold and put it on the church revived so you just hit on alternate and drag and just put it on top and hit on control alternate plus j anyway we just clipped it into the church revived and we just drag it put it on the nations too and one thing that we should know we added or we opened um an ellipse onto the nations so what we're going to do is we'll have to merge the ellipse and the nation together just so we don't have that problem of having the o and everything so we just clip it nice so being like this it means the green is not going to work okay i think i'd have to yeah i think yeah something like this would do but if it doesn't work i think white might work so let's go in for white and see going for white and see and nah black i think black would do yeah black would do so a glorious church revived to possess the nations and we have the light at the background working but it's working against the text so um let's just finish with the whole text and we will know what to do about the background and the this thing and the text so a glorious church revived to possess the nations we will add a quotation at Ephesians chapter 3 verse 21. I think we have a text down here already. Yeah, this guy. So, um, Ephesians. Ephesians. Yeah. Chapter 3. 3 verse 21. And um, we have chapter 5 verse 27 also here nice so for the quotation this is what i'm going to do i'm going to kennel it um in terms of the spacing i'll choose medium font size for it and just kennel it something like this something like this so uh not too much not too much that kind of typography feel that you're going for also adds up to the design make sure you're doing what you're supposed to do okay so before i i go ahead or do anything else let me just add a small finishing touch here just open so the, the reason why i'm using an ellipse for this um line is because i want the edges to be very thin if you use rectangle for this type of line it becomes very straight with no 
thin lines but then whenever you use the um, ellipse for something like this you get very thin edges at the end so for the backgrounds problem I have the right thing for it I have this um, resource called it's called spotlight yeah my spotlight is kind of like a deep black type of thing so I just hit on S and this is it my spotlight I'll just drag it into the work and you see how it works you see this is it this is how the spotlight works it, it gives the background some type of darker feel to reveal your texts and it's been my savior for all these years I've been using spotlights whenever if you are someone who really watches my video you if you watch my video all the time you see I've been using a spotlight wherever I go I've been using it here and there and it's very good so we still have a problem with the glorious and that's where the shadows come in and one thing you we, we all know I'm very sure we all know where the problem is coming from it's coming from the light bulb here we, if you take out the light bulb you can see the, 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 the text is very well I mean how should I put it it's revealing itself very good but then if we have the light bulb in it too it's some type of way good I mean it makes our background very nice but then yeah we do have to work with the text so it's two things it's either we take off the light bulb or we put in a shadow at the um, on, on the um, a glorious church revived so let's lock all the gold um, textures that we used let's lock them I think we've locked them all so let's select a glorious church and go to FX go to drop shadow and yep we're here with the shadow so I'll put my opacity somewhere 74 I don't want it to be very much deeper and um, for the size to somewhere around 169 to do for the spread not much but then looking at this here I think I'm I'm thinking about taking off the light bulb because the shadows somewhat uh, makes my work I don't know let me just hit on OK copy the layer style put it on church revived to see how it works also so I don't know look at this I wish I could say type in the comment section if I should go with this or I should go with the light bulb out but then I don't know I'd have to decide before I can come up with anything so what I'm going to do is I'll have to stick with this yeah and um, on top of the shadows we can add another shadow that's a black so you have to create a new layer under all the text so we are down at the spotlight we created a new layer we've selected black here and we choose our brush then we are going to brush from a glorious church revived all the way down something like this then we are going to reduce the opacity for the um the 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 the, the black whatever we did just now and I, so we still have the light bulb in place and still get the feel of the text and everything yeah so this will be what we're going for this will be what we're going for but then i don't know if 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 it were to be you what you're going to do i, I don't really know but then yeah this is what i'm doing now yeah so um um perfect let me take off or let me turn off the gradient map and see something just for a minute nice so you see any background works with the text no no it has to be this way any text works with any background so it works with the green it works with um, the red here that's the normal one without the gradient map and it can even work for the blue the one I did in the previous um, tutorial so yeah I think I'd have to end here with the tutorial um, the next time I'll come in with a cinema 4d tutorial how to start from scratch if you want to create a custom cinema 4d text from Photoshop into cinema 4d 
I'll get that one out very soon, as soon as possible. So, um, news flash: I'll be adding some um, leaves and things, or like I don't know, I don't know how the finished design is going to be, but I just wanted you people to get the idea about the background and the text and everything. So, yeah, guys, kindly subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment, do whatever you have to do, and make sure you join the family, the creative family, because I'm here for you guys. I'm here for you and um we are getting to 500 subscribers by the end of the year yeah we are getting to 500 subscribers by the end of the year so guys kindly subscribe to the channel like the video and whatever i'll be creative studio i'll be bright jones here